Bears. So I'm Petra and I've been writing a lot on the Tongue Tied Facebook group about movement work and how movement work can make a difference to the big picture. So the thing to think about in terms of the bigger picture is that, you know, the same way that your tongue and the way your tongue works can affect your whole body, everything else affects your whole body as well. So the thing that's really tough about a tongue tie is that it kind of exacerbates a lot of the problems that we get from our daily lives anyway. So, you know, we're always spending time typing on screens. Well, that forward movement of the shoulders, the internal rotation of the shoulders, that also is what your tongue is probably doing to you. So we have this weird situation as people with tongue ties where we've got a mechanical issue in our mouths that's affecting the mechanical issue in our bodies, but it's reinforcing all of the movement habits that our lives create. So I am definitely of the opinion that changing your movement can make a huge impact on your health, the same way that working with an OMT will make a difference on your swallowing, which will make a difference on your breathing, which will make a difference on your sleeping. But there's a bigger picture out there. And I want to talk a little bit, bit about pelvic floor because what happens is your tongue is not just in your mouth. It connects down via connective tissues and muscles all the way down to your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is right here below your ribs. And what your diaphragm is up to also affects your entire core. So when you have not great breathing, what typically happens is you create a lot of pressure happening in your core, a lot of tightness. And that tightness and pressure is just as bad for your core as anywhere else. And it also puts a lot of impact on your pelvic floor. So your pelvic floor itself is what it sounds like. It is the sort of the, the cradle of muscles that holds you up from the bottom. And when those muscles are unable to respond to the demands of your life, they get weaker and you get issues that range from low back pain to hip pain to incontinence to, um, you know, prolapse is probably one of the worst ones. For men, it tends to be um, in the inability to get an erection or prostatitis is the word that's usually used to describe pelvic floor issues on men. But it's not well recognized that those are mechanical issues. So dealing with your tongue tie is amazing and super helpful, but there's a bigger picture that you can think about as well. And if you're in a position where, you know, maybe you don't have the ability to get it released, or maybe the release doesn't help you as much as you would like it to, then you've got to start thinking outside the box and looking at your kind of whole life and being like, okay, how can I affect my tongue tie and my pelvic floor in a way that's not just about my tongue? So when I think about the pelvic floor, I think about kind of three main things that affect it, although I'm sure there's a million more than that. So the first one is one I've already mentioned. The pressure you're creating when you breathe, the pressure that's being created in your core and your diaphragm, that's huge. So if you're creating a lot of pressure in your core, you are always pushing lots and lots of load down on your pelvic floor. And it should be able to deal with a lot of load, but for most of us, they're weak because of the rest of our movement lives. And we put a lot of extra load, like more than they're, I don't like the word designed, but more than they're really supposed to deal with. So we're overloading weak systems. So obviously it's not surprising if they start to fail on you. So the first thing to think about is how you breathe. And there's lots of information on that, but the fundamental thing to start working on is how you can start breathing more with your rib cage and less with your belly because the belly breathing is actually a problem. This is a great one to work on with your tongue, tongue tie provider. The next piece that's really important in pelvic floor stuff, sort of getting out of the realm of tongue tie stuff, out of the, the realm of breathing mechanics, is what's happening at your hips. So the muscles that surround your hip joint, which is where the, the leg bone meets your pelvis, those muscles don't get moved a lot. The reason for that is mostly chairs and maybe a bit of shoes. So because we sit in chairs all the time, our bodies have adapted to being in chairs. The same way that your face and upper body have adapted to having a tongue tie. So that adaptation specifically limits what your hips can do. And when your body is limited in an area, it will find a compensation, which is amazing. 
But the problem is the compensations oftentimes for a lack of hip mobility are things like too much lower back movement or too much lower back stiffening or too much knee bending. Like there's a whole set of things that happen because the muscles around your hips are too tight. But for you, if you're thinking about pelvic floor things, the biggest issue is that your pelvic floor is failing because the muscles that kind of form part of it, because your hip muscles are so close to the pelvic floor, are not at the right length and at the right strength to sustain the loads that you're putting on the floor. So I like to do a lot of hip stretching to work on pelvic floor issue. That's really big. The final sort of of the three things is you want to have an input in your life, a movement input that is actually lengthening and strengthening your pelvic floor. And kegels, unfortunately, are kind of the go-to exercise for pelvic floor stuff. But if you think about a kegel, what a kegel is, it's a squeeze, right? That's not totally true. A kegel, when it's taught by a good physio, is a squeeze and then a release. So you get to practice letting go, which is better. But you're talking about a pelvic floor. If you think about your pelvic floor, it's the muscles that go between the bones of your pelvis. And if you imagine a hammock, what's happened with our pelvis is it's like there's a hammock going between two trees. And instead of those trees being, you know, where they started off at the distance, those trees have kind of moved forward a little bit. And so the hammock sags. And your body will not allow a muscular hammock to sag. So it actually shortens the pelvic floor muscles so that the hammock is no longer sagging. What that means is you can't produce as much force with your pelvic floor. So even if you don't put as much loading with pressure, and even if you loosen up the muscles of the hips, you may still have a pelvic floor that's too short. So you need to have an input in your life that starts to lengthen your, your pelvic floor. And that's kind of a bigger picture movement issue. So for that, you wanna be thinking about what the rest of your life is like. And the inputs that I find are the most impactful on the pelvic floor are better walking, better squatting, and believe it or not, better hanging from bars and trees, all of which have a difference or make a difference for the pelvic floor. So I'm gonna leave aside the hanging because that's actually part of the pressure system. But when it comes to walking and squatting, most of us are very poor at it. Believe it or not, it sounds crazy, I know, because you walk all the time. But because we're so short through the back line, our walking has turned into a falling motion. And if you Google it, you will see lots of people saying that walking is supposed to be falling. And that is just based on the fact that people have been observing our population. So the people who you know, grew up with you and me sitting in chairs. If you look at all the people in the world right now, you will see that 90% of us fall as we walk 90% of the time. What that means is that we use gravity to propel us. So it's not muscles that are pushing us forward through space. It's us leaning forward and then catching ourselves. So that leaning forward and catching means you're not using any muscles. When you don't use muscles, you've got to catch yourself. So you're creating a lot of micro damage as you lean forward. The micro damage is like an issue if you've got like knee stuff or hip stuff or foot stuff. But from the pelvic floor point of view, what's happening if you're falling and leaning all the time is you're not creating any muscle action. So when you're walking with muscle action, that muscle action actually pulls on your pelvic floor, it lengthens your pelvic floor, which gets it back to the length it's supposed to be, which means it's actually stronger and more able to create force and respond to loading, such as sneezing or peeing or whatever it is that overloads your pelvic floor. So you need the ability to walk better in order to create the input that will help your pelvic floor lengthen and strengthen. And it's the same with squatting. Most of us, if we can even squat at all, squat by curling our tailbones underneath us. Nothing wrong with that per se, but it doesn't lengthen and it doesn't strengthen the pelvic floor. So when I'm working with someone with pelvic floor stuff, I like to look at all three of those issues. How do you improve breathing and core mechanics? How do you improve tightness through the hips? and how you improve your ability to use your glutes, which then will start to tug on your pelvic floor as you walk or as you squat, and those will then start to lengthen the pelvic floor. So how that relates to your tongue tie in your current life is that you know most of us already have a lot of 
stuff happening in our lives, right? You don't have infinite time. So you can get your, your, your tongue tie released. You can do your oral myofunctional therapy. If you're still finding you have a pelvic floor issue, then it would be a good time to think about broadening your scope of you know, how you think about the issue. So the first things I always think of are lifestyle things. There are a lot of things in our environment that actually create problems with the pelvic floor. So the biggest thing, the single thing I would say everybody should think about is getting out of high heeled shoes. So shoe with any heel at all, which I think in my world means a shoe where the heel is any amount higher than the toe. So that even means probably your favorite running shoes. That is going to cause shortening through the back line. It is going to prevent you from using the back to walk with, and that is going to contribute to shortening the pelvic floor. So the most important thing is get out of shoes with heels. I have a lot of information on my blog where you can learn more about better shoes, and I will post a link to that. The next thing is about sitting and how you sit, and same thing. You can fix how you sit so that you're not shortening and tucking your pelvic floor, but instead you're sitting in a more neutral position for it, which is gonna help lengthen it. So those two things are really big. Third thing is stress. If you're really stressed out, your pelvic floor will tighten. It's like your shoulders when you're stressed out, you know how you like reach them up towards your ears. Um, also TMJ, very tight through the shoulders, your pelvic floor is probably stressed out as well. So just working on decreasing stress in your life is gonna have an immediate sleep impact, an immediate pelvic floor impact, and um, it's just, it's good for you anyway, right? Stress is kind of the worst thing you can do. Finally, I guess, um, you want to think about your activities. So, if you've got a weakened pelvic floor, heavy, heavy activities are not always the best for you. If it's weak anyway, if you're running or spinning or trampolining or going to CrossFit, and I was going to CrossFit all the time and paying myself back before I started learning more about movement, those things add a lot of pressure to your pelvic floor. So they're not the most helpful when your pelvic floor is already weakened. So I would say consider taking a break on those things even if you love them taking a break, learning how to strengthen your pelvic floor, and then going back to them once you've got a little bit more strength in that area. So walking, squatting, and hanging are, I think, the best things you can do for your pelvic floor, as well as getting out of high heels, adding a squatting practice, but adding an untucked squatting practice. And um, I can talk about that more if you guys have questions. And... Um, changing your environment, so sitting less, sitting in a more neutral pelvis, learning how to sit, Another heavy hitter is how you stand. Um, there again, I've got lots on my blog about it, but I'll make a separate video on that one. So how you stand makes a difference as well, basic body alignment. And um, then you're adding more stuff to your life like walking and squatting, which most of us are missing out on. So the best thing for your body is actually to walk. The theory I use is to kind of look to what hunter-gatherers, like what our ancestors would have used for their body. So thinking about walking five or six miles a day, which is a lot more than most of us do. So if you're nowhere near that, don't worry about it. Just add five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day. Start working it up and start working it up in minimal shoes because that's already better for your body. But the more you move, the more your body's gonna respond to the movement and the more benefits you're gonna get. So just the same way that OMT work, it's gonna help your whole tongue tie, upper body stuff. If you start thinking bigger picture, you're gonna you're gonna support your tongue tie work. So I guess another way to think about it is the same way that an elf or an appliance is gonna support your tongue tie work, bigger picture movement is gonna support your tongue tie work. I'm a teacher for a woman named Katie Bowman, who has a website called nutritionsmovement.com and I teach her work. So you can find a lot of resources on that website as well, and I really recommend it. It's life-changing if that's the way you wanna go. And I have a ton of information on my blog and website as well, which is petrofishermovement.com, and I'm always happy to answer questions. So message me or shoot me an email, whatever. Um, I will happily talk about pelvic floor and help give you guys some tips on how you can address that along with addressing all the issues that come from a tongue tie because it really is all related. So awesome. I hope this was helpful and by all means, I'm happy to answer questions. So let me know. Okay. Bye-bye.